Welcome back to The Fox Den. I'm Patty Skinner, the Director of Library Services. My name is Amaya Batiste. I'm studying nursing, and I'm part of the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians Tribe. And my name is Daphne. I am hoping to get into the nursing program as well, like Amaya is, and I am Alaska Native. Thank you both for being here with me today. We're talking about the third section of Firekeeper's Daughter, and you want to have read this section beforehand because this is when all the spoilers are revealed. The section is entitled West, and there are two major themes. The first is the unraveling of Levi Firekeeper and his fall from grace in the community. So he was a hockey god. He was the star of the team. He was the son of a hockey star. And from the beginning, he was just destined for greatness. And then Donis finds out that in the journal that her uncle was keeping, that the light bulb was actually Levi. He was the one behind the whole meth ring. So did that come as a surprise to either of you? Did you see this coming that Levi was really the one behind the meth ring the whole time? Um, for me, I, it was a complete surprise. I did not see that coming at all. Um, I actually envisioned something completely different. And that was kind of like, I thought that the book would end where like the white people in the native community, you know, they would always say bad things about natives or they didn't like them. Um, for some reason, I thought that they were going to be the ones up to the meth and that they were kind of pushing that on natives to maybe try to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. What about you, Daphne? I saw very subtle hints with a possibility of Levi being involved, but I was hoping that it wouldn't be in that direction, I guess. Um, yeah, that's very perceptive. I saw the second time reading the book through, I was like, oh, Levi was kind of a bad guy the whole time. Like he really did have a lot of flags in his character that mm -hmm. I, along with Donis, was willing to overlook. She really yeah. always saw the best in her brother. I overlooked them too. I think the first red flag I seen was when he beat up um, the other kid for saying something to Donis. And I I overlooked it because I was like, oh, you know, it's just a big brother being a big brother. But when you like think about it, it was kind of, a, you know, he said something minor to Donis and Levi kind of went way overboard. I think like throughout the story theme, um, how he was the captain and the leader of the hockey team and with the hockey team being involved, I kind of suspect that that he knew something about the meth problem, but I didn't want to believe it. Yeah, I didn't want to believe that it was him. Yeah, I wanted to see the best in Levi, and it really did come as a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. But I really thought about his friendship with Travis and the way Travis was willing to take the fall for him mm -hmm. when he was the, the one that um, had shot the BB gun that damaged the woman's eye and just having power over people. And there was a quote in the book that stood out to me. It goes, what would you do if you could get away with anything? If you grew up getting special treatment and if you had a friend like Travis to take a fall for the big mistake. So I thought a lot about that in Levi's life and how it's possibly inevitable for him to see himself as this larger than life figure that was invincible and that he could get involved with this meth ring and still not get in trouble for it or not get caught for any of his bad behavior because that's been the expectation his whole life that he would get somebody else to take the fall for him and he would get away with whatever he was involved in. Mm -hmm. So I think he had kind of a faulty narrative that he grew up with. I agree with that. And I think it was hard for like us as readers to like suspect Levi as kind of like involved with the meth ring because we are so like close to Donis and knowing that she's a good person and that is her brother. So like for me personally, like why would he do that? She's a good person. He should be a good person too. But we know that that doesn't always work out. Yes, right. I feel like um, 
Donis's love for Levi made it so that she didn't want to see a possibility of him being involved in such a negative thing like meth. Yeah, it just went over her head. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think she's she was blinded to it by her love for her brother, mm-hmm. and she was still seeking that connection to her dad and seeking his approval. Mm-hmm. I think that this is something that Levi learned from his mother, and both um, Levi and Dana Firekeeper and Mike and Grant Edwards were really driven by their goals and willing to do whatever it took to reach their goals. They thought that their own personal gains were more important than whatever was destroyed along the way. So what do you guys think about their characters and the decisions that they were led to? I was kind of going to bring up that as well. I remember Levi telling Donis that it wasn't really their dad's fault. It was Dana's. And she had mentioned that she was going to get what she wanted no matter what it took. And that she wanted a um, a child with Levi Firekeeper mm-hmm. Sr. Right. Um, so just seeing that, like, to go to that extent, Dana already knew that um, Levi was with Grace. And for her to still pursue that with him even though Levi Sr. was with Donis' mom, um, that kind of just shows that her character in itself is not that great. And then, like you said, um, Dana and, like, Call Me Grant, um, I also felt like they were um, kind of together with their um, characters and how they acted and how they thought about stuff. And even just how Call Me Grant would say kind of like, I don't want to say like sexualized things to Donis, but just kind of weird and creepy like remarks or comments to her. Before I even found out that he was part of the whole ordeal, he kind of just gave me like an unsettling feeling. Like he was just not a good person to begin with. Yes. Yeah, good intuition. Call Me Grant was very schmarmy the entire time. I agree in that sense as well. I think that Dana and Call Me Grant, as the adults, were willing to sacrifice people that they love in order to for their financial gain. Even her own son. Even her own son yeah. when they when they took the fall. And I know that they eventually ended up taking hits too. Like um, Dana wasn't a judge anymore. But I feel like that because of their blinded for their need for gaining more money they were willing to sacrifice people that they love yeah they were willing to go to any means and that really tells a lot moral, about their character morals mm-hmm. in general yeah. i mean she drugged uh donna yes so. and and if you get to that point i feel like is that love if you're willing to sacrifice yeah. them yeah. is that really love or even include your i feel like for dana to even include her son into something like that like it's one thing to do that on your own i'm not saying it's right but to do that on your own as a parent, as an adult, is, you know, that's far from including your children and being a part of something so rotten like that. Mm-hmm. So she not only took the step to be involved in it by herself, but took the extra 10 steps to involve Levi. Mm-hmm. And I believe that if Donis and Levi's dad were still around, that I've, I don't think it would be like this at all. Right. He would have he would have wanted to protect his family a little bit more. Yeah. So how does that differ from Donis's love for her brother and desire to protect her community? So how are Donis and Levi different from one another? I feel like Donis's character is sincere and she is willing to do what she has to do to help protect her community. And she has a genuine character that's filled with love for her community. And she's willing to do what it takes just to help solve this this meth problem. And whereas the character of Levi's, is, it's unfortunate that he is one of the main mastermind behind the meth problem. I do have to agree with Daphne. I feel like Donis is just... Um... She kind of reminded me of like a mama bear, like everyone around her, she knows she tries to take care of, be there for them, helps them if they're needed, um, need it, I'm sorry. And I feel like Levi's just kind of worries about himself, uh, of course, like the money and stuff like that. 
you didn't see Levi going to the senior center every day and helping his elders. You know, you didn't see him spending time with his mom like Donis did with her mom or things like that. And we can even look back where when Dana, I say pretending to be sad for Donis, when she came over to Donis's and was saying how it used to be so different, how Levi used to come to her with everything and they would hang out and now it's completely different. Even though Dana was just saying that to, I guess, one-up Donis maybe to trick her into, you know, even though that was just a false statement, you can see that that would be true. You know, Levi and Dana, I, I feel like they're more like, oh yeah, my mom's my friend, not really a mother figure where Donis grew up differently, raised by different people, and you can definitely see where that shows how she is with her community and um, her friends, her family, and even, you know, someone could ask me, do you want to be a confidential informer? And I could be like, no, I don't want anything to do with it, you know, where Donis could be like, yeah, I, I want to do this, I want to help. So there's that, I guess, good and evil side of Donis and Levi. I don't think even if Levi wasn't part of the meth ring, I don't really think he would help his community like Donis did. Yeah, she was very motivated by helping others and wanted to be part of the solution and wanted to help to heal people. Like yeah. she originally started out wanting to be a doctor. She wanted to mm -hmm. be able to heal her entire community. And, and even if she did want to become a medical doctor, in the end, if she's doing uh, medicine for her community, I still feel like that's like becoming a natural doctor yeah. in a sense. So she's still reaching a goal, but a different goal. And yeah. to add to before, I would like to mention that Donis takes her close relationships very seriously. I feel like she's very invested with her close relationships and she values, like she valued Lily, the elders, her mom, and she, she just loves Deep. I even think that kind of, I guess, maybe more in the beginning, I know we're talking about the third section, but when, you know, Travis kind of hang around Lily wanting to see her and stuff, and I think it was at the ice rink, I feel like Donis knew that, you know, Travis was having a hard time with drugs and stuff, but I feel like I noticed, like, she tried to pick apart, like, the good things, like, mm -hmm. oh, like, he looks a little better yeah. today, maybe yeah. he's doing better, yeah. or, oh, he doesn't look, you know, as tired, or doesn't smell as bad maybe he's on the mend or something mm -hmm. like that so even knowing that someone was you know deep into meth or whatever it may be she was still trying to pick out you know see the best the enough. good things yeah yeah she even struggled with the end she couldn't stop loving her brother right. even knowing yep. the <laughs> truth <laughs> and not being able to recognize him anymore she still felt that love so deeply and the sense of wanting to protect her brother still. So yeah. I think that's that's very true. So the second big point that we wanna talk about is the importance of elders. And I think we should start by talking about Donna's and Levi's different approaches to the way they appreciated elders and the way they spent time with them. Um, I know I said it before, but you know, you didn't see Levi go into the senior center or getting Granny June or helping them with their new phones or anything like that. He was just out doing his own thing where, I mean, half of Donis's time was going towards her elders and she wasn't getting no gain from that monetary gain or anything from helping them. That is just, I mean, as a Native American, that's how you grow up. Your elders, that is the highest people in your family. You would do anything you can for them. And that is what Donis was doing. And Levi, like I said, I just feel like he was, he didn't really care. And he don't, I didn't even think, I don't even think he really wasn't really involved in his culture. Now that I think about it. I would have to agree with you, Amaya. I did see a lot of work from Donis with elders because she loved them so deeply. And whereas Levi would claim respect elders like during the ceremony. Yeah. But he never followed when it would through. Make him look good. Yes, yeah. when it would make him look good. But he didn't follow through in actually caring for the elders. Yeah. Right. Levi just kind of gave lip service to it and made it seem like that was so important to him, but didn't right. actually demonstrate. 
So who are those people in your lives that you've looked up to um, in your culture that you would consider your elders that have taught you a lot about the culture that you've grown up with? I mean, obviously the people in my family, you know, growing up, if someone was three years older than me, they were an elder. You know, if I was sitting in a chair and an elder came in, I'm getting up because Mm -hmm. they're not standing while I'm sitting. Um, Little stuff like that. But it doesn't, for me anyways, personally, it doesn't just stay inside my family for respecting elders. I mean, I take care of old people for a living and it feeds my soul. I love it. Out in the community or even if I were to go to the casino or the tribal government center up in Manistee, anyone who's older than me, and I guess it's just ingrained into me, like I respect them, you know, they're higher than me. They deserve my respect as they did their elders when they were my age. Mm-hmm. So um, it goes it goes beyond my household. And I would have to say on all Native Americans, that is just a universal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for example, like Daphne's Native Alaskan, I'm Native here. And we've talked about this personally. That's the same for all of us. Mm-hmm. It's respecting elders, you know, that's universal. Across the country, we do the same thing. I bet you ask any Native anywhere and they would say the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Respect your elders. That's yes. one of the biggest teachings we're taught growing up. And it could be something silly from like, yeah, I'm sitting in there standing. I got to get up so they can sit down. Mm-hmm. Or it can be more serious. Um, I was seven, eight years old taking care of my grandma with diabetes, her insulin, her wounds, you know, her eyes, eye drops, everything. And I, I didn't care to do it. I'm taking care of who I love, my elder Um, and I, you know, seeing people my age nowadays, I I don't really feel like I can say that for everybody. I see a lot of people disrespecting elders and growing up the way I did, it's kind of sickening, I guess you could say, but you know, everyone grows up differently and I get that also. But like I said, universally, I mean, natives will tell you all the same thing, respect your elders and that's one of the most important things that we are taught growing up. Thank you for sharing. That's so beautiful, Amaya. I was really struck by this part of the book and it really stood out to me how much Donna's, how much time she put into spending with the elders and that that was something she really prioritized every day at lunch. And I just thought that was so unique of her. And Mm -hmm. I was bringing this up to Daphne and Daphne said, no, that's not unique. That is our culture. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. um, I, Definitely would have to agree with Amaya that it is across the board and Native communities um, encouraged to respect your elders. And unfortunately, there'll be a few who don't. um, And it's becoming a little bit more common these days. But from my own personal experience, how I showed respect to my elders besides like maybe helping them with their groceries or opening the door I personally love to spend time with them and listen to their stories Mm -hmm. because their stories always have meaning and teaching. And sometimes elders want to be heard. There's healing in those stories. And and I think Angeline Bully would agree with you. Yes, yes. Native Americans love stories. We love storytelling and Mm -hmm. we love story listening. And I think another part, like why we respect our elders so much too, is that's kind of like our our source to know our culture, Um, especially me coming from, you know, my dad's native and my mother's not. And unfortunately, all of my elders other than my father and my aunt, and I have a cousin, um, they've all passed away now. And it's honestly gut wrenching, like not being able to talk to them and ask them questions or, you know, hey, granny, how do I say this in Anishinaabe? Or you know, how do you make this soup or, you know, little stuff like that. And I feel like a lot of people take, and even if you're not in a shop, you know, taking your grandparents for um, granted, you really do lose out on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know growing up, you don't think it's important. Oh yeah. Grandma's telling me this story again, but you know, when you're older, you do realize like that is an important, you know, important staple in your life is listening to your elders and hearing what they mm-hmm. have to say. Yes. And as Native Americans, that is how we learn our culture. You know, we don't we don't really get to open a book and, OK, this is what they did. This is how they do it. No, we learn it from stories or teachings from yes. our elders. Right. So much is passed down 
through like an oral tradition. And then based on what you're saying, Amaya, that you're looking up to people every little bit older than you is that there's yeah. also the the growth that you're going to experience and you'll have the opportunity to then share with younger generations and you'll be the elder to someone and be able mm -hmm. to kind of share these special family traditions and share your culture with people younger than yourself. Yes. I think that before um, modern education, our elders were our educators because they had ex life experiences to share with everybody in certain situations, whether it's like starvation or what you do during this time of the year, they were even the educators. How to, like, even how to like raise your own children too. Yes, and I wish I could go back and spend time with my grandma just oh, a little same, bit longer. Same, me too. <laughs> so touching guys. Mm -hmm. Amaya had it. mentioned to me yesterday that her grandma was like her mom and my grandma was also mm -hmm. like my mom. Yep. Grandmas are moms, that's yes. for sure. And so especially that you both shared that important relationship with your grandmas. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that pivotal scene where Donis is in the car with Levi. And they're on the ferry coming back from Sugar Island. And she realizes that in the car next to her is Sini, who mouths, get out. And then Donis has to make a really quick decision. She thinks that there's just one person there to help her and she doesn't realize that actually all the elders have pulled together to help her so what did you all think of this scene and how were, what did you what were your reactions um when i was reading it i just I, my mouth was probably open because i was just so surprised and that, you know that's when we found out levi was part of it and all these other people were coming into it I thought it was awesome, and especially the reasoning why um, the elders did come to help Donis. Kind of Donis's reward, in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, they paid her back for helping them all this time, and every day at the senior center, um, they came to help her. And it was weird to me because, you know, that whole community knows that Levi is Donis's brother. And for them to, you know, help her out of that situation, that she was in by Levi himself. I don't know. I had a weird feeling about it just because, you know, they picked to help Donis right. and not her, not her brother. And that's why I kind of feel like it was, in a sense, Donis's award for helping them every day and visiting them every day. And I, I also know elders themselves feel good when they know that the younger generations are listening to them mm -hmm. or, you know, asking even asking for advice or asking to hear a story that makes them feel good too so i feel like by don is going to the senior center and them having that two-way um communication or teaching in a sense that like i said this is th that was donis's reward and um i think that's why they helped her well that sounds like just building community like yeah the, your community is going to be there for you when you need them, regardless of what that need is. So the seniors needed to learn how to use their iTunes gift cards and Donna's was there for them. And then they really showed up for her in a really big way as well. Yes, I could see how the elders possibly could see Donna's in a bad situation in the car. So they automatically could tell that she needed help. Kind of just like a parental instinct. Yes, like a, a parental instinct and because Donis valued them so much uh, for a long period of time. They then did feel valued, and so they would wanted to return the favor to her. Mm -hmm. So then, when Levi realizes that he's that he's boxed in, he runs off and ends up kind of tackling Sini, and that I think is a really strong demonstration of Levi's amount of respect for elders. Yes, uh, de most definitely. He was doing whatever he could to get away, no matter the, you know, consequences, mm -hmm. even if it was trampling an elder. That actually broke my heart a little bit that Levi was willing to do that in order to get yeah. away. And it does show his character in the story that he did not respect elders. Mm -hmm. that he he was only about his own gain, like we talked about. He, 
He was willing to sacrifice anything in his. Kind of reminds me of like a plow truck. The plow never out of the way so he can get, you know, to his end goal, no matter who he hurts or what he does. Yeah. He was willing to sacrifice the biggest values in his culture and also the health of his community by introducing drugs and going against what his family's teachings really would have been. So I also really loved what Sini does after that is that she keeps trilling and Donis took that to mean that we have faced worse than you and we're still here. Mm -hmm. They have seen many Levi fire keepers in their time, and they're yeah. not going to let that hold them back. Yes, that's very powerful. Yeah, 100% agree. I think that that really was such an important scene for me. And thank you guys for sharing this conversation about it. Of course. Did you have any other thoughts you wanted to include? I'm just glad that being Native American, you don't see many Native American books. And this book in particular with the Anishinaabe language and teachings and um, Native medicine, it, it just means so much to me that this is a common read and people that are not Native American get to experience, obviously not fully, but they get to experience a little part of Anishinaabe culture and maybe get to see what it is about rather than what you hear on Facebook or what you see in the news or what, whatever it else may be. And I know around our community, um, Anishinaab traditions or culture, it's not really talked about or prioritized. And I'm not saying it needs to be prioritized over anybody else's, but um, just it's not talked about. And so I was happy that other people were able to read this book and they also needed to read this book for classes that they got to see, um, you know, just the tip of the iceberg, what Natives are about and how we love and how we care about our um, elders and our family and um, even just how, like, strong-willed we are. And Donna's, you know, she was the perfect candidate to show everybody, you know, how, how we are and what we believe in and what we do. That was very touching. Tear up, Amaya, but thank you so much for sharing that. And I think this book has been such a gateway to have so many important conversations. I would like to add that to the young people out there, especially Native American, but but all young people in general, be Adonis out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, spread joy, spread happiness, spread love. You don't and have to be better than anybody else. Help Just hands. Just be better than who you are the next day. Take the steps to improve your life and the, the lives of others just because mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do. And if we all acted like Donna's, the world would be a much better, <laughs> a much better place. <laughs> she does. She has a very wholehearted way of living that has a lot of compassion. And I we know yeah, me and Patty had talked about this. Um, we were just so connected to Donis, and it wasn't a character in the book for us, you know? Like, yeah, she's the real person. And I would talk to her in first person manner, like, yeah, Donis did this, <laughs> you know? Oh, she's doing this, you know? Um, and gosh, I wish she was real because I'd love to meet her. Yes. I would. Mm -hmm. For sure. But I think that um, Donis being so real made me able to connect so much with this story and I learned so much about this culture and it's really awakened an interest in me that I want to learn more and it is um, so important to this area and these are people that live here in our community and I want to continue to increase my knowledge and be able to have more of these conversations and increase my cultural awareness so that's definitely been really important to me throughout reading this book. Thank you, Patty. Yes, thank you. Thank you both for being here. This has been my pleasure to host you. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedules as nursing students to prioritize doing this. So thank you so much for joining me. Anytime. Thank you. I don't know, some of the- um... Scratch that if, if, if I'm incorrect. <laughs>